you're going to have pockets, you might as well have a pocket the size of your head. <laughs> Hello. So um, this video is probably going to be a tiny bit chaotic um, because I end up sewing in my brother's room. I have been absolutely in love with Larika Matoshi's strawberry dress for ages. Um, I didn't want to completely copy it. I have gone for a slightly darker pink fabric. So if I grab my fabric, the Larika Matoshi strawberry dress is like a very pale pink or you can get it in black. I've gone for a darker pink simply because it better suits my colouring. The plan for this dress is kind of a mid-century inspired take on the Larika Matoshi strawberry gown. I'm going to do like a combination of pattern hacking and draping. I have my trusty dress form set up. She has got a bra on but no knickers. Um, saucy. Nah, it's just so I can get my um, bust measurements set up. This is a McCall's Archive Collection circa 1963. The silhouette is still quite classic sort of 1950s flared skirt. I like the length. It's going to be quite a bit longer than me because I'm like four foot eight-ish, which means um, that commercial patterns normally don't fit my body type. I have very broad shoulders as well because I am an ambulatory wheelchair user so a lot of this project will be done on the floor because you can't get wheelchairs upstairs in this house. Now I'm being a little bit sneaky with this pattern. I'm not making a mock-up primarily because I'm going to be going off mostly my own patterning anyway. I'm just using this pattern as a guide for the skirt. I, I went for a brighter pink and not a skin colour. I couldn't find my skin colour because I am incredibly pale and white just looked naff. Um, and that was what they had in the local haberdashers. This is times of plague and pestilence here in Merry England and indeed the rest of the world. So we are winging it just a little bit. Hello from the floor. This is a really weird angle, but I'm guessing this is how normal people normally see me. I'm not used to looking at myself from the top of my head down though. I'm suspiciously like a bodice and therefore not what I want. After a not inconsiderable amount of time <laughs> fighting with a paper pattern in an enclosed space, I eventually managed to cut out all of the skirt pieces correctly. Sewing Zoe doesn't like pockets. Future wearing this dress out in public Zoe thinks pockets are a great idea and every time past sewing Zoe doesn't include pockets, the future Zoe wears it, they call past Zoe a bit of a dick. Editing Zoe here because the audio was so unbelievably bad. Basically, what I was trying to explain, um, which the camera didn't pick up, is that I um, tend to put my gathers more at the front of the garment than equally all the way round because I don't want the bulk when I'm sat in my wheelchair um, around my bum and the sides of my legs because it's very closely fitted. It also makes transferring a little bit more annoying. Um, so there's a fine line between adequate floof and not looking like a backwards bustle. Um, I guess if you had like a spinal injury and you were in, like in a chair full time and you never stood up, it wouldn't matter because nobody would ever see your bum. Um, and that you could do a backwards bustle effect to have a lovely full skirt without it getting in the way of the fit of your seat. The type of disability I have means that I can stand or walk short distances. For example, if I'm visiting friends or family and I need to use the stick or crutches to get around the house. So it has to look okay stood up as well. Let's get down to business to defeat the pattern. I feel like I've seen that in every single sewing video I ever do and I need to stop. It's not a meme, it's just embarrassing. Okay, I'm gonna overlock my pieces because I've got a fancy overlock foot. I'm not cool enough to have an overlock machine because those puppies are expensive. And now we're on to the really exciting bit, cutting out the skirt pieces of the pattern. Oh! Right. How many times can I say right in a video? Here you can see a Zoe in their natural habitat regretting any decisions that ever involve maths. Hey, right, okay, I have to cut two of these. Am I gonna have enough fabric? I did indeed have more than enough fabric. I actually had so much more fabric than I needed that I ended up making cushions out of it. 
I got the front and the back panels of the skirt all cut up and then I called it a night. I need to go and feed the chickens. <laughs> Look at them. They're, uh, they're here. Uh, they're waiting for me. So I got quite a bit done yesterday. Um, I did the two front and two back panels of the skirt and um, using my own bodice pattern, which I've altered slightly to have a v-neck, I have drafted up the back of the bodice. I'm going to drape the front, so I just need to um, sew the bodice, then I can gather the skirt, um, and then I can see whether or not um, I'm pretty much done, or whether I need to have another rethink of how the bodice is gonna work out. I am coming to the realisation that I really need to get more than two metal bobbins because both of my bobbins are pre-wound with... Oh uh, no, I've got to like unwind an entire bobbin. Here I am gathering several metres of pink fabric into a skirt. I've pinned the centre front together and then I'm going to pin the centre back and then I'm going to sew them up. Um, getting there, it's going to look like a skirt soon. I then spent a couple of happy hours sat on the floor cutting out the bodice pieces in tool and then it was on to the gathering. Thank goodness for the invention of the gathering foot, it just makes everything so much faster. So um, it's this gathered now, I'm going to do it two more times to get the really full gather that I want. Um, if you did it by hand you could probably get it instantly but it's like way too much hassle. So I have my trusty gathering foot. And I, I was so excited to try this skirt on for the first time. Okay, so this is fit test one with the zip. I was originally going to have it as a back opening dress, but then I realized how much I hate back opening dresses and I'm sewing this one. So why don't I sew it to be front opening? By the time I've done all the ruching with the invisible zipper, you aren't going to be able to tell in theory anyway. I forgot to buy twill tape for the waistband so it might be a little bit of a saggy Susan um, until I sort that out but yes obviously this is going to be more here it's going to be quite a bit more fitted um, but I, I fit quite loose um, and then I take adjustments once I've sewn the zip in along the side seams because I found that to be the easiest way of doing it basically with previous dresses I've done so Et voila, we have a bodice that I can now sew a zip onto um, and get to doing all of the fun bits of arranging where all of my pleats and gathers are going to end up for maximum um, strawberry effectiveness, basically. So obviously all of the best skirts and dresses have pockets. Um, it's my own pocket pattern. I just took it off the pocket from my favourite skirt. I made the pocket tiny bit bigger um well because i can <laughs> if you're gonna have pockets you might as well have a pocket the size of your head um <laughs> here i am setting in the pocket and overlocking the side with my overlock foot there you go darling good girl now nah, that's all you've got eat your bread don't lick it from your sister. Hello, Dizzy. It's on the floor, sweet. It's one there. It's one there. <laughs> no, no more. I have um, finished draping and pinning, and then I tack stitch down all of the ruffles on the bodice. So I just have to sew on the draping for the bodice. Um, I need to sew in the pockets, which I cut out, overlocked, and set in yesterday. Um, I need to hem the bottom of the main skirt and then I need to attach the bodice and skirt pieces together to finish the dress. So I'm really hoping that I get to finish it um, by the end of this weekend uh, because our anniversary is on Wednesday and I really want to wear my new dress for our anniversary so I better get on with it and stop procrastinating and talking to a camera. You may have noticed that I don't mention a zip any further than this, 
That is because I decided to scrap the zip and instead the dress closes with hooks and eyes. So, it is Monday, same outfit, different day. Um, I'm still getting there with the dress. I set in both pairs of sleeves um, yesterday and I did pockets and I'm now remembering why so many of the dressmaking things I've done have not included sleeves or pockets. It took forever! It took a whole day! Stop procrastinating! And I've attached the waist, so I did the first try on with everything pinned. I'm going to sew everything up. I'm probably going to have to take in the side seams just a little bit to make it a little bit tighter on the waist. Um, but I prefer to do that once I've done the first waist seam. And then I'm going to do a lining. I'm probably going to bag line it. I'm not quite sure. I haven't decided yet, I'm just going to see how much I can be bothered. The answer was I couldn't be bothered to add the lining as it was basically two layers of a dress already so I just flat lined everything and here I am making a face mask to go with the finished dress. I didn't get any footage of the final trying on thing because I was too excited and forgot to film. Overall I am so incredibly happy with how this dress came out. It has the most fabulous twirl. I think if I were to make it again, I'd adjust the fit of the back just a tiny bit where one shoulder is higher than the other. But other than that, perfect. I love it. I wear it all the time. I can't believe it took nearly a year to get that video uploaded. Um, I basically forgot I filmed it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that and um, if you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button and uh, subscribe if you're interested in more sewing type videos like this one.